Here's our track. A stomping bassy number with a breakdown and drop in the middle and a general sense of build up throughout. Drums and bass are both layered, built on a range of sources. And we've already marked out our structure using live locators. So that we can play the track out live, we want to get the whole lot into the session view, mostly as audio clips, but with a few parts left live for jamming. The first stage is to export the whole lot as a collection of full track length audio files, a process that live makes light work of. We turn off the master channel effects, we'll keep those live, set the loop range to encompass the whole track, hit command or control plus R to bring up the export audio dialog, select individual tracks in the rendered track dialog at 24 bit, click export and choose a folder for our renders. We've rendered our drums as full tracks, but it's always handy to have some deconstructed drum loops too. So we also export four bars of the full drums mix in solo kick, kick and hats, kick and snare, and hats and snare versions. Similarly, grabbing eight bars of each of our three main bass layers separately will expand our jamming options. It's also a good idea to give yourself instant access to any crashes, whooshes and other spot effects by loading them into a sampler or drum rack on a new MIDI track, even if you keep the full rendered tracks in the project too. We do exactly that now with our crash and siren samples, although we'll come back to the MIDI triggered impact and drum fill shortly. We now save a new version of the project and delete all tracks apart from the gated synth lead, Tone 2 Electra 2, LFO modulated lead bass, D16 Lush 101, Pad, Spectrosonics Omnisphere, and Spot Effect Drum Rack. Then we simply import our rendered tracks and group stems, but not the individual tracks that are already in group since we don't want them in the project twice. We then name each track and set appropriate warp modes. You may find that some tracks have to be unwarped, stretched to their full extent and warped again to fit the length of the track properly. Next we delete the contents of each track in all sections in which it makes no sound as we don't want to create scene clips for these parts, but we leave the entire block in place in all sections that contain any signal at all. Now we have an audio plus three synths and a drum rack version of our original arrangement. We can now also chop out the MIDI triggered spot effects sounds mentioned earlier and copy them into the spot effects drum rack. All that remains is to turn our song sections into scenes. Set the loop braces around each section in turn and select Consolidate Time to New Scene from the right click menu. Voila! The session view now reflects the arrangement such that if we play all the way through each scene from one to the next, it'll sound identical. Once we turn the master effects back on, of course. Every clip is set to loop by default, which is fine for all but the final outro scene, which ends on a downbeat and thus won't loop properly. So we disable loop for all of its clips. Then we put our deconstructed drum and bass loops on the drums and main bass tracks below the full renders, and finally, color the clips on each track to indicate variations.
In rendering all individual tracks, we also exported the two effects returns, reverb and tape delay. We've not actually loaded them back in since we'd prefer to keep the send effects running live, giving us the option of sending other tracks to them should we feel the urge. To achieve this, we simply mirror the send levels on the rendered versions of the original tracks. In this particular case, there are only two of them, the rhythm guitar, delay, and bells percussion track, reverb. Download over 30 exclusive plugins. Get hundreds of pro quality samples and power up your production skills with in-depth tutorials. We break it down for you step by step and you'll see exactly how it's done in expert video guides and producer masterclass sessions with pro producers. Get all this and more with Computer Music Magazine every month on iPad and iPhone, PC and Mac, Android, and in print.